Welcome everyone uh, to another short lecture uh, which is about the anatomy of the palatine tonsil. As you can see from the figure here, we have the palatine tonsils shown in the figure, and they are guarded by two arch, one anterior and one posterior. Now let us uh, define the tonsils. Indeed, the palatine tonsils are ovoid lymphoid tissue with a fibrous um, capsule located laterally in the down here in this figure you can see the palatine tonsils and laterally they are covered um, uh, by capsule right here is the in the green um, uh, color now lateral to the capsule yes there are, uh, there are a couple of structures but uh, let us skip that and look at this muscle which is the uh, superior constrictor uh, muscle of the pharynx if you uh, want to know more about the pharynx and muscles of these pharynx you can watch the uh, lecture of the pharynx anyway you can look here this is the superior constrictor muscle the uh, a, a, a muscle that's covered, of course, internally by pharyngeal basilar fascia and laterally by the buccopharyngeal uh, fascia. So these two uh, fascia cover the pharyngeal constrictor uh, muscle. I'm just trying to explain what you see here in the green uh, color. Um, the palatine tonsils that you see uh, in these uh, figures. This is the palatine tonsils on the right and on the left. So they are a collection of lymphoid tissue on each side of the um, oropharynx. They are located in the tonsillar pit and uh, between uh, or again in the interval between the palatine arch. So you have the palatoglossal arch anteriorly you see this arch located anterior to the palatine tonsil and you have another arch posteriorly so the anterior arch is the palatoglossal arch which is formed is a mucous membrane cover a palatoglossus muscle so that means there is a muscle here called palatoglossus muscle and here there is a muscle covered by mucous membrane this muscle the same name palatopharyngeus muscle so muscle anterior and posterior and they are covered by mucous membrane to form these arches and folds so anyway um uh, the palatine tonsils the common site for infection uh, producing the uh, characteristic of uh, tonsillitis inflammation of the uh, tonsils and the deep cervical lymph nodes also become like a large and uh, tinder. However, the recurrent attack of tonsillitis can be treated surgically by tonsillectomy, removing of the tonsils. However, um, during the uh, or one of the complications of tonsillectomy, uh, which is rare these days, is the um, uh, post operative bleeding because of mainly of vessels lateral to the palatine tonsil especially here the veins um, uh, located lateral we'll talk about that in details that known as baratonsillar or we call them external palatine uh, veins so this vein is called baratonsillar vein or we call it external palatine vein you can say external palatine vein or paratonsillar um, vein. When they remove the tonsils, there is um, a kind of a tendency for, um, or they are the source of post-operative bleeding. So, just briefly about the Walder's ring of lymphoid tissue, all the all those covered uh, in the uh, lymphatic system, but. Um, look at this ring that composed from lymphoid tissue that encircles the opening into respiratory and digestive system. So, you know, we talked today about these uh, tonsils that we, we can see them in the mirror. They are the palatine tonsil. Now, you have also laterally tubal tonsils at the um, tubal elevation of pharyngotympanic tube or eustachian, uh, eustachian tube, right? Um, and uh, still we have, that means we have four laterally and we have one superiorly which is the pharyngeal tonsil or adenoid and one below at the posterior 
part, this is the tank, in the posterior one third of the tank called lingual tonsil. So you have adenoid and lingual tonsil, one arm and one, um, as you see here, pillow. If you look to the tonsils, you can see a kind of uh, um, what we call it um, uh, crypts. So these um, uh, uh, crypts, of course, when we say uh, crypts, that means you, we are talking about these kind of slits here. These crypts, because the T is silent, right? We the T, okay, sorry. So the T is silent, so the pronunciation is crypts. So they are extended deeply into the body of the tonsils, uh, surrounded, of course, by lymphoid. Uh, nodules, debris, and foreign particles collected um, within this or these um, uh, crypts, right? Sometimes when you look to the mirror after like uh, tensilites, you can see like uh, white stuff uh, there and debris. So this is the they are uh, located in the uh, crypts tonsillar crypts. So crypts are, as I mentioned, pockets or folds that occur naturally in the uh, tonsils. Yeah, normally in the adult, we have from 10 to 20 of um, them. And usually should be normally, usually a small and uh, debris free, right? That means clean and there's no debris um, uh, there. So uh, now uh, to the uh, relation uh, of the tonsils again, we'll talk more and more about that. So again, this is our this is the palatine tonsil that I'm talking about, and as I mentioned, they covered laterally by the um, uh, fibrous capsule. Now the capsule separated it from not just the vessels and nerve there, but also from the superior. Uh, constrictor muscle. This is the superior constrictor muscle, the superior muscle of the uh, pharynx. So the uh, capsule that you see here, uh, the fibrous capsule that encircles the tonsil, separated it from the pharyngeal, um, uh, from the pharyngeal, from the superior constrictor uh, muscle. And here in this space in between, there is a kind of loose areolar connective tissue. In this loose areolar connective tissue, there is a vein called external palatine vein. The external palatine uh, vein, in addition, of course, to the tonsillar artery here, and we have the glossopharyngeal nerve here. That means we have veins, artery, and nerves. You have to keep that in your uh, mind. However, the veins here, the external palatine vein, ultimately um, it drains into pharyngeal venous uh, plexus. So now this is the superior, uh, as I mentioned, constrictor uh, muscles, which is the uh, muscle of the pharynx. Lateral to it, you have the um, facial artery here and the carotid sheath, and the most closer structure is the internal carotid artery. So um, tonsillar tumor or infection there can uh, result in pain in the ears, right? Why? Because uh, there is a nerve, as I mentioned, the glossopharyngeal nerve, which is the cranial nerve number nine that um, innervates the uh, tonsil. And we know that the pharyngeal a glossopharyngeal nerve also has a tympanic um, uh, a branch to the middle ear to form tympanic um, ablexus. That means, and also it innervates the internal surface of the um, eardrum. That means the pain in the tonsils can be referred like to the ear. So you can get like ear pain due to referred pain conducted from the tonsil and shared with the and the same nerve shared with the ear as well. So pain here in the tonsils can also refer to the uh, ear because of the shared um, uh, shared uh, nerve. This is the nerve that I'm talking about, the glossopharyngeal nerve. Look at it here. So this is the 
palato glossus muscle and posteriorly you have the palato pharyngeus muscle those muscles as i mentioned earlier form two arches and in between you have the tonsillar bed where is the palatine tonsil located now the yes i want to talk about the blood vessels but i will remind you that look at the with the glossopharyngeal nerve okay nerve number nine look at its close relation to the palatine tonsil which is more vulnerable for injury you have to take care now the arteries um, of the um, that the arches that supply the palatine tonsils they come from uh, um, uh, uh, around four parts so you have the um, descending palatine artery right descending down and you have at the same time ascending palatine uh, uh, the ascending palatine arteries that means you have descending palatine and ascending palatine and you have the dorsal lingual artery which is a branch of lingual artery right this is the dorsal not the deep right dorsal lingual and you have the ascending uh, pharyngeal artery that means you have descending palatine you have ascending palatine you have dorsal lingual and you have ascending uh, pharyngeal artery you have to take care here when you remove the during the tonsillectomy when you remove the palatine tonsil look at this anterior arch which is the palatoglossus let me remind you where is that this is the palatoglossus so if you notice here that in the palatoglossus it and there is a, a tonsillar um, uh, artery and its vena comitant um, uh, uh, penetrates the the arch itself so they are located in the arch itself so an injury to the uh, bellato glossal fold will lead to some time into um, hemorrhage right during the uh, surgery so uh, just remind you that this one the descending palatine artery is a branch from maxillary artery while the ascending palatine arteries they are a branch of facial uh, artery and the ascending pharyngeal artery branch from external carotid artery itself this is here you can see the um, uh, facial artery with the ascending palatine and the maxillary artery with the descending palatine and you have the external carotid artery with the ascending pharyngeal and of course you have the lingual artery with the um, dorsal uh, lingual uh, branch so again uh, this is the uh, palatine tonsils and the blood supply while the venous drainage um, uh, attained mainly by the external palatine let me change the color external palatine vein external palatine um, vein or we call it paratonsillar uh, vein that drains into pharyngeal uh, venous uh, plexus so again this is the palatine tonsils here and this is the tonsillar bed look at the tonsillar bed the palatine tonsils removed so you can now see the anterior arch that's for the the palatoglossal arch and the palatopharyngeal arch formed by the two muscles and you can see here you have the tonsillar branch of facial artery which is a source of bleeding but mainly you have the external palatine vein that drains into pharyngeal venous plexus which is also the source of hemorrhage and after tonsillectomy look at the close relation of the glossopharyngeal uh, nerve the cranial nerve number nine in the tonsillar uh, bit so remind you this is the superior uh, pharyngeal constrictor muscle right tonsillectomy um, tonsillectomy is removal of the tonsils performed by uh, dissecting the palatine from the tonsillar bed or sometime they uh, by using guillotine or snare operation which is like an instruments um with like a small hole so the um through which the palatine tonsil 
uh, within there, then they cut it. Gratin or a snare operation, another small um, device to uh, cut it. So anyway, each procedure involves the removal of the uh, tonsils and also the facial uh, sheath covering uh, the um, tonsillar bit. So because of the rich blood supply, as I mentioned earlier, uh, so bleeding is um, mostly the common serious uh, thing that can happen, uh, not just uh, from the uh, 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 external palatine uh, vein, but also from the tonsillar artery and or other any, um, arterial that wakes there. So glossopharyngeal nerve, glossopharyngeal uh, nerve, as I mentioned, is in very close relation to the in the tonsillar bed, and um, so it accompanies the tonsillar arch of the lateral wall of the uh, pharynx. So it's uh, vulnerable for or to injury. Um, internal carotid artery, as I showed you, um, is also vulnerable when. Uh, it is tortuous and lies directly lateral to the uh, tonsils. Look at it here, the internal carotid artery. It's close also to the um, uh, palatine tonsil. So that was about the palatine tonsil. Uh, thank you and hope, uh, hope you find value in it. Thanks.